tech stocks, and one of our greatest pleasures in life is to be joined by the CEO of the stock swoosh, Melissa Armo. Melissa, thanks for being with us. As we reported on the program, the tech sector came in hot and heavy with their Q1 earnings. Microsoft, Amazon, Intel, and Facebook all did well, and those earnings came amid some public relation problems for a few, in particular Facebook, as we know. But how overall did do the fundamentals look for the tech sector going going forward? Well, you know what? I think all in all, so far, Apple hasn't reported yet. You're talking about the couple of stocks that I've reported. Netflix reported, Google reported, Amazon reported. But, you know, the earnings reports were good. Fundamentally, they were good. But I got to tell you, as far as the stock charts go, technically, I was disappointed about the reaction, about the reaction the stocks had right after the earnings. None of them rallied. Even the stocks that gapped up after the earnings did not rally. So we didn't see any follow through on the positive fundamentals and the reports for the positive technical jump up that happened overnight in the gap. You just didn't see any follow through. So I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow night with Apple, but I know one thing, it needs to see some follow through. And Apple's the, the one, the, the outlier that's still, still out there. But um, do you think maybe the reason they didn't get sort of a, 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 a jump there uh, after the reports was this uh, concern about potential regulation. We know that the Europeans are uh, going to impose regulation beginning on May 25th. And uh, after those hearings with uh, Mark Zuckerberg, there's a concern, uh, not concerns, but it looks like there's a possibility there'll be regulations, although they're a long way off in the U.S. Do you think that might be something that sort of tampered the expectations for future growth in the tech sector? Well, I don't know if it's going to have a, a, an impact on the growth for long term, but obviously it has, I think, right now for this earnings season, second quarter. It might have something to do with it. The EU is going to be regulating, I guess, the regulation start in May for Facebook is one of them with the privacy concerns. I don't know what's going to happen. They had the test of the, the, the Mark Zuckerberg testified in front of Congress a couple weeks ago, but nothing really came of that in the U.S. So I don't know what's going to happen in the U.S. with it. But I will tell you overall what I when I see the charts, when I look at them technically, no one seems to be really wanting to jump in and buy them as far as big institutional money, power of money. They're, it's not coming in in a full sweep and buying up these stocks. Now, these stocks, you got to remember, have had big, huge moves. 2016, 2017, all these stocks made brand new all-time highs. That's why, that's what helped the market move up. You had these stocks leading the way, tech stocks. And so they really feel kind of heavy right now. Even though they're still in strong uptrends, overall, nobody's coming back in and buying them. Whether it's because of all these regulations or the threat of regulations all over the place, I don't know. But no one seems to be that interested in buying them. Netflix is the only one that really had a little bit of follow through on the earnings report where it traded up, made new highs and was green. Amazon made new highs on the earnings last Thursday night. But it really dropped. It dropped on Friday morning and dropped big. Well, I, I wonder, talk about Amazon specifically. I wonder, Melissa, if, you know, Amazon is so expensive and they really have to keep, they're like a shark, right? They have to keep growing. They have to keep eating and getting bigger. Other, otherwise, they're a pretty hefty valuation uh, to, to take on. Uh, do you think that these big stocks like, like an Amazon, uh, you know, that those are good investments or should uh, investors be looking for? Or some of the smaller or even some of the large uh, specifics like an in Intel. Uh, we're always going to need chips, it seems. W what, what's your view? Well, I don't think these stocks are bad investments. Again, they're still in uptrends, but I don't think right now is a good time to buy in. If you're ready in them, long-term investing, hold them. They're fine. They're still strong. We could see better earnings report and better reactions into the later fall of the end of 2018 for these companies. I would say, I actually don't think anything looks like a buy to me right now, except for, to be honest with you, Chipotle, which is not a bang stock, but that's the only stock right now I'd say go, you can go long because that, that stock did a correction on the earnings report last week. But as far as buying right now, I wouldn't buy any of them. It doesn't mean the charts are bad investments. If you're already in them, hold. As far as buying things that are cheaper, no, I wouldn't do that either. I think this is just not a period to be buying right now. Everything has had a good rally. And I would wait until probably next quarter earnings season to buy back in or when the market starts to look better. The market fell today. The market fell on Friday. The market, you know, the market's nowhere near the highs right now. The market feels heavy to me. Well, I, I wonder about, you know, they, they, they say uh, it's easy for people on TV and elsewhere to just say, well, buy the dips. Uh, but the, 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 the skill, the artistry, uh, as it were, is really is when is the dip? I mean, we, we know Facebook, for example, has taken a big dip. But is it done dipping? Is there another shoe to drop? Uh, so your advice is sort of hold off for a little bit. 
Now, I would say my philosophy is don't buy dips. You don't, you, you don't buy dips. You buy into momentum when the momentum is trading up. So, for example, Facebook would have been a good buy if it had gapped up huge and rallied big time. It failed to do that. So let's look at the next one out tomorrow night. May 1st. Apple reports. If Apple gaps up in a big way and really shows its hand right into the open and rallies, it'll pull the whole market, it'll pull the whole sector up. I don't know if it's going to do that, but I know there's a lot of expectation around this report. Why? Because it's the first report since they had the, the tax law passed in December, and there's this, this tax law that says you can repatriate monies back to the U.S. with a lower tax fee. It used to be 35%. It's going to be 15% to bring this money back. So Apple's going to bring over $250 billion back to the U.S., supposedly, and they're going to talk more about that, and that's going to happen, and they may increase the dividend. So we'll see how it reacts to that, but all of those things might be positive for the stock in a reaction where it would provide an opportunity to buy Apple tomorrow night or maybe buy some of these other stocks that have been dragging, but I would say Netflix would be the next one to watch. But they've all got to move together. In other words, if Apple fails... If Apple gaps down in the earnings, it has a negative reaction and falls or even gaps up like the rest have in fallen like Amazon did on Friday, then there's still not buys in this place, in this time right now. And you got you to wait. I don't like the idea of buying dips. That's not what I do. I don't teach people to do that. At the stock swoosh, people have to buy momentum. You want to go with when it's moving. You want to take a position and get the lift. And if something, if you're short something, you want to, you would short something when it's falling. So you buy stuff that's moving higher. And none of the reports, none of the stocks really saw that movement, which was what was disappointing, except for Netflix. It just had a little bit of a move up, but it never followed through then because Google, Amazon, the rest of them kind of went boom, and they just fell. We will be watching Apple. You're always full of great information. <laughs> Melissa Armo, CEO of the Stock Swoosh, thank you for your time. Thanks for having me.